Welcome to the second program in Parksburg 150th anniversary series. Tonight's program, Going, Going, Gone, will feature information on Parksburg's history and the many exciting items that will be available at the Victorian Harvest Ball fundraiser on October 31st. At any time, you can submit questions by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and typing in your question. We will answer as many questions as time permits. We begin this evening with a message from Parksburg Mayor John Hagen, followed by a QVC segment by Kathy Christ, who will highlight commemorative items for sale and introduce the Victorian Harvest Ball silent auction. And now we introduce Mayor John Hagen. Hello, everybody. I'm John Hagen, duly elected mayor of the borough of Parksburg. And on this fine occasion of recognizing our celebration of our 150th anniversary as an incorporated place to live, the borough of Parksburg, I have a few things I want to tell you, starting off with a little brief detail and maybe even some history. How do you define our town? Population, the culture, the geography, the history. I believe to do so reasonably well, you probably want to include at least some, if not all of these. One notable item, it occurred to me last night that I live, have lived long enough to say I have been a citizen of the borough for almost half, half, it's 150 years. No brag, just chronological fact. Incorporated in 1872, Parksburg is located at a latitude of 39 degrees, 57 minutes, 33 seconds north, and a longitude of 75 degrees, 55 minutes, and 14 seconds west. At an elevation of 540, yeah, 543 feet, it has a land area of 1.2 square miles estimated. Speaking of estimates, the 2020 census is behind the curve due to the pandemic, but they estimate the population in Parksburg to be approximately 3,900 people. At that reckoning, the average age is 37.2 years of its citizens. There are 1,472 households, 70% of which are family households with an average makeup of just over three individuals. I don't know how you get fractional individuals, but that's how census data works. 51% or more of our residents have high school diplomas and an additional 15% have associates or bachelor's degrees with an additional 6% having doctorate or graduate professional degrees. Maris Mullen wrote a rather total, rather lengthy history, which is posted on our website. And I have plagiarized some of that stuff that I'm about to read to you. So sit back and enjoy, if you will. As a settled community, Parksburg predates the Revolutionary War. First known as Fountain Inn, circa 1734, that building still stands today. The area was inhabited by settlers of predominantly Scottish Irish descent who migrated to the area to pursue an agrarian lifestyle. Rapid growth started in 1831 when the tracks of the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad were laid through Fountain Inn on its western destination expansion. Since Parksburg was located at one of the highest points along the railroad, it was decided to locate the repair shops, the roundhouse, and the construction repair facilities here. But at these shops, the standardization of parts and mass production in the railroad industry had their beginning. Much of the land in the area was owned by the Park family, P-A-R-K-E, who desired to establish a European style industrial town. When the railroad shops left town, that dream sort of disappeared. With the name change of Fountain Inn, to Parksburg around 1836, Park still desired to pursue his dream. In 1872, Horace A. Beale moved his iron company from Hibernia into the former railroad shops and established the Parksburg Iron Company. The company eventually became world known for its quality charcoal iron boiler tubes used in steam engines for locomotives and the such. At times, employing hundreds of men and staff the company had a profound positive economic effect on the area here and surrounding for years. Due to Beale's Iron Company, Park's dream of an industrial town became a reality. 
Parksburg, formerly of Sadbury Township, became a borough in 1872. The years 1900 and 1920s were known as the glory years due to the prosperity brought by the Iron Company. The town experienced growth in commerce, population, civic involvement, and national recognition. Parksburg was a pioneer in many new technologies and innovative adventures of the time. They included public radio stations circa 1920, Parksburg Airport, semi-pro baseball teams, semi-pro basketball teams, Parksburg Horse Racetrack, I'd like to know where that was, public utilities such as water, sewage, gas, and electricity, telephone and telegraph, civic activity, public transportation, including train and trolley, business districts, an active church committee, community rather, and public education. By the early 1920s, competition from big steel companies took their toll on the iron company and the following depression had the resulting effects. The Parchburg is on the rebound. The renovation of the former industrial building known as Johnstone Engineering, also was part of the Parchburg Iron Works before that, into a governmental administrative center has been a great asset to the town. Housed there are the Parchburg Borough offices, the public meeting room, public or Parchburg District Court 15307, and the Parchburg Police Department office and facilities. The recent renovation of the former Parchburg Firehouse into a state-of-the-art facility that houses the newly formed or recently formed Keystone Valley Fire Department with their firefighting trucks and EMS service provides coverage to the area 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. I've lived here all, but all, all my life. So I moved away for a couple years to Coatesville, but in my heart, I've lived here all my life. Parksburg, with its challenges met and those yet to come, truly holds the promise of what quality town living is and can be. The people, the culture, can best be described as unique, eclectic, urbane, and generous. From the bottom of my heart, I believe in this town, its government, and its people. Hope is real. Lastly, if you'll indulge me, my fellow citizens, a little Irish prayer. May you have walls for the wind and a roof for the rain and tea beside the fire. Laughter to cheer you and those you love near you and all that your heart may desire. Happy 150th, everyone. Your mayor, John P. Hagan II. And now we welcome Kathy Christ, who will be doing a QVC segment on the various commemorative items that are going to be offered at the Victorian Harvest Ball. Kathy. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, so first up, uh, we have these commemorative coins. Um, back in the centennial, they did coins as well. Um, so we thought we would take the new logo designed by Steve Mellinger and, um, and create a challenge coin. So we're selling these for $12 a piece. So on the one side is Steve's logo. Uh, it says Parksburg, Pennsylvania on the top. And then down here, it has the dates of 1872 to 2022. And then on the back is uh, the date of the celebration that we're gonna have May 20th to the 22nd of 2022. So that's the first thing and they go for $12 and they'll be available at the Harvest Ball or you can contact, you can contact me and contact the Borough Hall. Um, and the next thing we have row pottery and um, row pottery, I just love row pottery. They hand paint all of their pieces. Um, so these will be available until October the 31st, and that's the day of the ball. Um, so I need to place the order by November the 1st. So this is the first piece. Um, this is the Parksburg mug with Steve, Steve's logo. And this one is $30. And all proceeds uh, go right to the, um, right to the celebration, the, um, yeah goes to the celebration. So that's the mug, that's $30. And the next piece we have is a utensil jar. This one uh, measures 
six inches, six and three quarter inches by four and a half. It's a utensil jar and this one runs $42. So they're just beautifully made. And all, like I say, every piece is hand painted. Uh, this next is a pie plate. This is a 10 and a quarter inch diameter. And this runs $35. I just think it's a beautiful piece. And all their pottery pieces are um, microwave safe, oven safe, dishwasher safe. Um, you can eat off of them, drink out of them. So everything about them is safe. So that pie plate is $35. And the last piece that we have is the half gallon crock. This is beautiful. Um, and this runs $65. So this is our largest piece. And the logo, we just think Steve Mellinger just did a phenomenal job with the design of the logo. So, um, so next Kathleen is going to show you uh, what is going to be available at the silent auction at the Harvest Ball. So the sesquicentennial celebration is taking place next May, May 20th, 21st, and 22nd in Parksburg. And we are going to be playing a slideshow that will show you what's happening at the Victorian Harvest Ball silent auction. In addition to having a catered dinner of Victorian dancers, various displays, wine tasting and cash bar, uh, photographs by Shelley McKenna. Uh, we are going to have various items just related to Parksburg. We have a whole collection of various postcards that will be offered at the silent auction. And in addition, we have collections of the postcards that we can be uh, bid on as well. Many of the artists uh, that have either painted or sketched in Parksburg will be having their prints or originals at the silent auction. And look at this lovely Parksburg lamp that will be available at the auction. All kinds of memorabilia will be available for bidding. Books will be featured. Among them are some of the ones pictured here. And you see the book uh, Parksburg by Bruce Malday. Uh, that particular item will not be at the silent auction. That will be on a table uh, with Bruce Malday, who will personally sign uh, each individual copy that is purchased. And of course, Kathy did a fabulous job of highlighting the commemorative coin, the pottery, they will all be available for sale and the Victorian Harvest Ball silent auction awaits. Please reserve your tickets today. Parksburg.org or eventbrite.com. So with that, we will begin some questions and answers. Uh, one of the questions I'm going to be posing to Kathy Christ is, Kathy, exactly uh, how does one go about getting tickets and how much do they cost? Uh, tickets to the, um, to the Harvest Ball, they're $60 for an individual and for a couple, they're $110. And you can get the tickets on the website Eventbrite. Um, or we also sell them down at the Parksburg Borough. And down if you go to the borough, um, go during their hours, of course, and, um, and you can pay by cash or check down there. And of course, you can pay by credit card over Eventbrite. And Kathy, one of the questions that keeps coming up in reference to the Victorian Harvest Ball is, do people have to dress up in period garb for this particular event? Absolutely not. Um, we encourage period dress costumes, um, but you certainly do not have to dress um, in a formal long ball gown. You can come as you are. You can come in jeans if you want. Um, you can come any way you want. We just will be happy just to have you there. <laughs> 
<laughs> if someone does want to dress as a Victorian person, either a man or a woman, uh, where would they go about getting any kind, kind of costume? Um, actually, there's a place in Millersville. Uh, it's, uh, I can't remember. Kathleen, do you remember the name of the place? It's up in Millersville. It's a costume. Oh, oh, Millersville University. You can, yes. you can call them and, and you can rent a costume up there either that or they sell costumes um over ebay amazon i've even seen them on walmart i found two of my dresses of course i have three dresses <laughs> oh um describe them what are they like please inform us um two of them are are i got them as a halloween costume at goodwill so i wore one down at the final friday um but, you know, I, I bought a hoop over Amazon and I put a hoop on and like it, it kind of passes. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I got, I got two of them at Goodwill and the other one I just ordered over, I think, through Walmart it came. Yeah. And, and just be careful, I, I said in the, in the last women, webinar, if you order from China, of course, the shipping there takes weeks. Um, if not close to a month. So it probably would not be here in time for the ball. Okay. What we talked about tonight was the uh, catered dinner as being part of the Victorian Harvest Ball. Mm -hmm. Can you fill us in a little bit about the details of that dinner and what the entrees are? Um, the entrees, we, you have a choice. You have a choice of chicken marsala or pot roast. And um, and a lot of if, if a lot of couples, we've noticed that they're getting one of each, <laughs> so maybe they can share, you know, take bites of of each other's. But um, but yeah, it's it's chicken marsala or pot roast. And Pam, the caterer, uh, traditions traditions catering is that what she's called? Is that the proper yes, name, of Pam? Um, she's going to be catering, and she she just makes delicious food. And what happens at the end of the meal? Will there be dessert? Yes, we'll have dessert. Um, we'll have, uh, there's going to be little little trays that will be set in the center of the table. And um, and yeah, they'll be lovely. And uh, what's the name of the cupcake place down on Main Street, Kathleen? Sweet, sweet serendipity. Is that what they mean? They're going to be providing uh, little cupcakes, um, and then we'll have some other things as well. <laughs> it all sounds delicious. So, um, who in your family is attending the Victorian uh, Harvest Ball? My, my my husband and myself, and my daughter and her boyfriend. And I'm trying to convince my 14 year old to come along too. So. Um, He's undecided right now. <laughs> I can't thank you enough for uh, heading up this uh, committee that is planning the, the events, uh, not only for the fundraising here at the Victorian Harvest Ball, but also uh, the May celebration, again, May 20th, 21st, and 22nd. We also thank all of you who tuned in tonight uh, for tonight's presentation and a special shout out to Mayor John Hagen and of course, Kathy Chris for their presentations this evening. Really, Kathy QVC is already on the phone waiting <laughs> to recruit. <laughs> Our next series program, History, 150 Years in the Making, is scheduled for Wednesday, November 3rd, when we will feature the many festivities that have been planned by the Anniversary Planning Committee, who has been working hard on the celebration for May 20th, 21st, and 22nd, 2022. We hope you enjoyed tonight's program. Have a great evening. We'll see you next month.